Hello, everybody. Hello. OG, OG Rose. Rose. <laughs> How y'all doing? So, um, kids Daniel. Kids are asleep. Yeah, kids are asleep. Yeah, it's um, good stuff. <laughs> late night chats. Yeah. So, um, Daniel and I are here again. We wanted to discuss native tongues and native worldviews. Yeah, shorter piece. You can find it long. on our medium. Yeah, yeah. OGRose.com. Yep. We'll do those. Please like us. <laughs> Please, <laughs> Please use the <laughs> Please use the We'll put up cat videos <laughs> eventually, we promise. Oh, gosh. No, well, no, that's the world, right? But, uh, no, I mean, there's this kind of dilemma with language where if you know a language, you don't translate it. Uh, you just know it. Like, if you know English, you don't translate what someone's saying into English. You just know it. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't really know a language until you yeah. don't have to translate it. Uh, but then there's a dilemma because can you really ever learn a secondary language and not have translation? I mean, it's really, really hard to get that, to that level of fluency. Yeah. But if you never do, then there's then there's a real sense in which you're not as good as a, as a fluent speaker. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Have you ever heard that if you dream in the other language oh, yeah, you're learning, yeah, then yeah, that's yeah. like a sign that you're, you've are you like made it? <laughs> that you've made it. <laughs> you, you've oh yeah, the no, there's no doubt. Yeah. Well, I mean, in sign language, they were always like that. The teacher was like, You're, you need to stop translating the signs into English and treat sign language as its own language with, with its own syntax yeah. and structure. But when you're born an English speaker, it's very difficult to do that. Yeah. Um, so the whole idea is that you, well, you really know a language when you don't have to translate it. And sure, I mean, you can get to the point where you translate so quickly that you're yeah. practically the same as a native speaker. Mm -hmm. But there's this... There's this Problem where if you also have to translate a language, you can kind of feel uncomfortable with it. You can always feel kind of uncomfortable with the language because you're yeah. translating and not feel like you quite fit. Well, yeah, and that's what you know makes it difficult to learn a language. Yeah, or right. you know when you're trying to, it's like it's it can be t it's tiring. You know, tiring. So it's just it's like oh, I'll just go back to English. You know, <laughs> right? Um, you kind of have to force yourself. I mean. That's why living in Spain, where you're just constantly surrounded by it, Spanish, you can't speak Spanish with your host mom, or you know, you then you're kind of like forced to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when you're forced to, you know, it becomes a little bit a quicker process. But there's still a lot of translating that's going mm -hmm. on in your head. Oh, yeah. You know, it's almost like you're doing this double, you know, twice the work. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if not more, because there's a lot of it's a sort of like just a, inviting yourself to have cognitive dissonance in a way sure but like with language oh, yeah. so it's not a, you know it's not concepts and things that are you know you're having this re encounter with but just another language right. so right um yeah it's interesting mean, getting into the world views how that yeah well what i was gonna say i mean you just hit that you said it can be exhausting that can be sort of tiring mm -hmm. well you know the argument of the paper is in some respects like the process of learning a language is also the process of like learning a new worldview or encountering new worldviews. Like if you're a conservative and you encounter a liberal, for example, like to try to think why the liberal thinks the way they do, to try to enter into their world, uh, well then you have to accept their paradigms and it can, you can always kind of feel off. Um, and, and likewise, you know, today under pluralism, you know, people feel like the givens of society, like what is true is no longer clear because, right. you know, if you grew up, say you go back 50 years ago, everyone you knew was a Christian and your neighbors are all Christian, it's just kind of given that Christianity is true. Right. Uh, but now if the neighbor is a Hindu or the neighbor is an atheist, you know, that creates a kind of de um, instability. Sure. And so you're always in the state of having to re-justify Christianity yourself. So it's like a state of always being in translation. Sure. Like you're having to translate, um, it's like translating it into rational and justified terms as opposed to given terms. And so you're always in the state of sort of constant translation. Right. So there's, so in the same way that it's really hard to ever, um, feel about a secondary language the same way you feel about a native language because you're always in a state of translation. So it becomes really hard to ever feel like you belong or comfortable in belief systems that are constantly destabilized and you're always kind of constantly having to remind yourself why you believe them yeah. and why they're justified. So you're just constantly exhausted. Well, it's interesting. I was thinking what, what while you were speaking about all that, which was, that, that was very good and very true, um, I thought about how interesting it is that the words, you know, if you think about like Spanish and English, if you think about the word water and then agua, mm. they're literally the same meaning, right? but with different words, right? very different sounds, right? Uh, you know, just, 
I think, well, I guess for, I bring this up because it makes me think of some of the other papers where, you know, the best way that you can maybe actually have the empathy and the ability to converse and then it coexist with people who have different belief systems is to remember that, that there's something actually that is the same mm. about what you both hope for in, in a sense. Mm. And those words sound extremely different and, and on paper are, you know, if you didn't know, you would not relate them at all. Right. But they're actually, there's something that's actually at the core the same. Right. So it's like, I don't know, let's just take an, if we take an example, it's a lot of times people have the same objective. Oh, yeah. But the how is, is, is agua different. versus water, yeah, you know? Right. That's so, right. Well, generally, people want to take it, care of their families. People want sure. to take care of one another. They just have different ways of thinking. How or people want about. justice, you know? Yeah, they want justice. Justice, freedom, they... these things. And it's like, it's. I think there's a lot of lost in translation because people forget oh, how, how much they actually desire the same thing. Well, because, what, it, things. because what ends up happening is instead of going through through the different language to go, oh wait, aqua means water, like learning that. Instead, yes. you know, what did you put? You like you learn you're learning the other language, you're like, oh this is hard, forget it. I'm just going back to English. Oh, yeah. oh, so gosh, what you end yeah. up doing is like, oh ah, forget it, I'm just going back to English. So you like and yeah. yet if that's a temptation and that's yes. what unfortunately um, I think what happens when what Peter Berger called plausibility structures, what Philip Reed called givens, when all those things dissolve. I'm gonna that... start quoting people from Sesame Street. <laughs> Well, Oscar, you know, Oscar is, you know, Oscar the Grouch is like given. You stay in the trash can, yeah, and it's go. not destabilized. You, it's like a given, right? <laughs> and then when, oh, I don't want to see these neighbors, and he just puts <laughs> his clothes in. Like, no, Oscar the Grouch is perfect because you know, like we're saying, there can be a fundamentalist backlash uh -huh. in pluralism because yeah. it's given. So you just want to go back to the good old yeah. days, like what? So you can say, forget, I'm going back to English. The temptation in pluralism, which is almost like you were talking about living in Spain. It's almost like. Everyone now is, in a sense, forced to live in Spain because <laughs> yeah. you can't, you know, so everyone's forced yeah. to live in a different culture yeah. because there's, it's not given. Well, then there's a temptation to be Oscar the Grouch where you just put yeah. it in. But the flip side is to also kind of say where well, it's all relative and there's no truth. But, you know, which, are, which like, there, what's the problem with that then is there's nothing in common. Aqua and water aren't signifying the same thing if yeah. it's all, there's no truth and it's all relative. So you're not going to push through the difference to find the commonality. Yes. So the problem with, so yeah. you can have a kind of um, isolationist Oscar the Grouch uh, backlash, right. or you can have a sort of relativizing um, where you think that's going to, well, if we say we're all different and truth is relative, we'll all come together and be unique because, you know, we, we won't fight because there's no meta-narratives. You, know, like yeah. yes. you know, we won't fight because there's no right. meta-narratives to fight over. Well, yeah, yeah, but at the same time, there's no commonality to push through the difference to rest upon. Right. So, right. It, so it has a nihilistic impact in its yeah. hope of increasing tolerance. But Peter, you were saying with the Peter, you were talking bringing those gentlemen out. Feel great, because they were talking about oh, givens and plausibility structures. As those things dissolve, there can be authoritarian backlash against those things yeah. and isolationist yeah. background and, and fundamental. So, yeah, so in a sense, like you go into a classroom to learn a secondary language. When it's hard, you can be an isolationist and just say, forget it, I'll never use this and go off somewhere and only use your language. Or you can say, oh, languages are different. So, you know, words must not mean anything because everyone just has different words and, you know, they use whatever is useful, but the words may not ultimately signify something. Well, then the, you're, there's no possible possibility of translation because there's no commonality to bring people together right well and I mean the thought is too but I'm still kind of hung up on I said Peter Reed instead of Philip Reed no 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 shame on you oh did I oh, no no, no wow. I did I oh did. no 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 that's okay minus five <laughs> no, points no, no. on our midnight <laughs> chat quiz no no um, but, a, you didn't say David Reed for me yeah that's no, no, no. so <laughs> that a P yeah. but um you know with that though with the agua and water it's you know I think that yeah like you're saying there's risks with with being like, well, you know, they're different words, but it's the same meaning, so we kind of all mean the same. Okay. Because you, you can't do that. Like that's yes, there's this there's this idea that there is something that is signified that we actually all have a have a desire to achieve that is actually quite very similar. Right. But the how is very different and those words oh, yeah. are very different. And so, some of the so hows to... may negate the ends. Like some exactly. of the hows may ironically and paradoxically exactly. negate the achievement and that's what you have to really that's when you have well, to really you have to start the into work. the hard work of, yeah. of what what do those words actually mean right. and what do they yeah so right yeah i mean i think the think the paper is great i love the analogy i love the the um comparison native and the native world yeah world. yeah so, well uh you can find like you said you can find yes. it on medium you can find it on native OG tongues and native world views Get and over uh you. thank you all for your time and uh michelle thank you for your insight yeah we thank appreciate you daniel it. we appreciate right. it we appreciate yeah. you guys too have yeah. a great one oh, have a good one <laughs>